just over in the glory land. Not that far away, is it? Now, if you were to go there by spaceship, it'd be a long ways away. But uh, we know we're not going to get there by spaceship, are we? Uh, the Bible speaks of the day that we're going to be carried by the angels uh, up into, uh, into that glory land. It speaks of the uh, twinkling of the eye, uh, being caught up to be with him. Amen. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter number 12. Covering a series of messages here in Matthew chapter number 12. As we've looked at the uh, Pharisees and of course the key thought or statement of the passage that they might accuse him. And uh, so he would have the Pharisees following him around, showing up at services. Their purpose was not any interest in hearing the truth, not learning the truth. Their purpose was in uh, finding occasion to accuse him. And uh, what a wonderful way to live. Have people following you around and they're just looking for you to mess up. And uh, they uh, want you to mess up. Of course, they picked the wrong candidate. They're looking for that because they picked Jesus Christ who's perfect. He never messes up. So uh, they, they, they followed him quite a while. It's amazing how they missed all the messages. They missed all of the miracles. Uh in the process because the intent of their heart was wrong and uh, be careful our intent of hearing the preaching of God's word and uh, yes the word of God is powerful and it is sharper than a two-edged sword uh, yet there's many that have sat in preaching services or have taken and done their devotions or read the Bible or heard uh, scripture and and yet it's not touched their heart like uh, everyone else uh, why because the uh, intent of their heart and uh, and yet there are those that uh, in those same circumstances and yet all of a sudden they uh, for a moment or whatever did listen and, and God got their attention and uh, they got more than they expected uh, as they uh, heard the word of God and got under conviction and ended up getting saved as a result. And so we've just uh, looked at a few messages. We now live in a country that is not Christian friendly. It's hard for us as Christians to understand that or adjust to it. Uh, but uh, our country is not Christian friendly. I'm talking about Christian being those that are Christ followers. Uh, there's a lot of Christians who, uh, you know, uh, speak friendly towards Christ and Christianity, but they're not true Christians. Uh, if you're going to be a faithful follower of Jesus Christ, uh, trying to uphold and, and live the, uh, the uh, word of God in your life, the things that Christ had taught, you'll find even Christians be your enemies at times. Uh, they uh, want to name the name of Christ, but just not uh, follow what what he taught. And and uh, so we do have a an environment today as Christians that uh, is not Christian friendly. And uh, adjusting to that, well, Christ, uh, he was in an environment like that. The Pharisees, the religious crowd, the ones that were supposed to be the ones interested in spiritual things. Uh, and yet they were his enemies. They were the ones seeking to uh, accuse him and to attack him. Uh, and, and so they go around. We I just looked at how 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 do you respond in such an environment? Well, uh, first, we, we looked at mercy, not sacrifice. Uh, it's good to be zealous about <coughs> the word of God. It's good to be zealous about the things God teaches and and uh, want to live those things in our life. Uh, and uh, and yet mercy, not sacrifice. Uh, don't let your zeal get the best of you. Uh, that you go out and you start slaying people, calling fire down from heaven to devour them up uh, rather than uh, having a burden for their soul and uh, and understanding that uh, you know not everyone uh, gets to hear the truth like we do uh, and in fact many people today when they're saved they hand them an NIV or something to read and uh, and that's what they get and that's what they've come up with and and uh, and so they've they've not heard the uh, the pure word of God and and, and so those things are all new to them uh, as you share with them or they were brought up in a a, a church that is all about self-esteem and and uh, just, uh, you know, encourage people and and yet never, uh, you know, uh, share the, the, the truth with them. And, and and so they've come up under that. And so if we're not careful, we're zealous for the law. We go out and we'll start slaying people. Spiritually speaking, we'll we'll start not talking about slain in the spirit either, but uh, we'll we'll start, uh, you know, uh, uh, cutting people up because uh, we're zealous for the law and and uh, for the uh, the word of God and those things. And. And uh, Jesus, of course, he stresses mercy, not sacrifice. 
Secondly, we looked at a bruised reed shall he not break. A bruised reed shall he not break. Jesus' intent in going out into this world was not to start fights. Uh, it was not to start fights. It wasn't to uh, go out and, and uh, you know, and, and, and approach and deal with all the moral issues and everything of the world. Uh, we're not going to clean this world up. Jesus Christ is going to do it from the back of a white horse. All the uh, the uh, saints will be riding with him. We'll be amongst that crowd as they ride forth in the uh, the uh, end of the tribulation period. And, and uh, there's going to be a cleansing in this earth and and uh, things, uh, you know, uh, cleaned up and and uh, set right. And he's going to rule with a rod of iron. But uh, that that is not as Christ. The, Bi the Bible says Jesus said he came not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So you can find that throughout this account as Jesus comes to preach and he's trying to share the gospel and heal people and the Pharisees are attacking him and they decide we're going to get together and and uh, decide how to destroy him. And uh, Jesus doesn't go confront him with it. He just what does he do? He just turns around and he walks off and starts dealing with some more people and healing them and preaching the gospel. Uh, he never ran from them. Uh, he was just too busy doing what God had called him to do to spend the time fighting them. And uh, he came to seek and to save that which was lost and look for people that were willing to listen and and wanted uh, to hear the truths of God's word. And and so he uh, he, he would leave them and, and, and go to others and and uh, just remind a bruised reed. Shall he not break? Well, uh, last week we looked at uh, don't misunderstand who the enemy is. Don't under misunderstand who the enemies are. And uh, Jesus said, if you're not for me, you're against me. You either gather or you scatter. Uh, the Bible says love your enemies and, and we are uh, to love our enemies uh, and we're to be burdened for people and we're to help uh, the stranger and and uh, not just Christians. The Bible says as, as they are there, therefore opportunity to do good unto all men, especially them of the household of faith. Uh, but it says uh, as you have therefore opportunity to do good unto all men. And uh, we are supposed to help the poor and we're supposed to help those that are, uh, are hurting. And and we are still supposed to reach out to the rich and, and to those that uh, that, uh, you know, uh, don't want to, to listen. We're still supposed to be amiable and and easy to get along with them and those things. And and uh, but uh, in the process, don't forget who your enemies are. If you're not careful, the devil is very crafty and he'll he'll, uh, you know, uh, get somebody to become your best friend and and uh, to uh, draw you away from Jesus Christ. And from the teachings of God's word and get you to compromise. And and uh, and Jesus says, if they're not for me, they're they're against me. And and uh, of course, as as uh, we, we we look at that in this world, understand we uh, we are uh, we are lambs, uh, you know, amongst sheep. I mean, lambs amongst wolves, sheep amongst wolves anyway. And, uh, you know, as we go out, it says be uh, wise as serpents, harmless as doves. And so uh, we look at there, you know, but but don't forget uh, if they're not for Jesus Christ, they're against him. They're, they're scattering, not gathering. And and uh, that's hard sometimes because it's people we love, family members and friends and people that we work with regularly and are close to. And and uh, and, and we ought to pray for them. and We ought to love them. Uh, but don't forget. Uh, we're for Christ. Uh, be amongst those that would gather those to Christ, not those that would scatter uh, away from and. And so as we, uh, you know, uh, looked at these three messages, well, just finalizing uh, these things as he's dealing with uh, in this. It wasn't that he's he's uh, going out, uh, seeking out the Pharisees. He does not do that. He's out there preaching to the people. The Pharisees just keep coming at him. And uh, so they've come at him. They've come at him. Uh, they've, they've listened to the messages. They've seen the miracles. And so what was their final attack? Well, he's doing it by the devil. He's of the devil and all these things will be done by the devil. So that brings us to chapter number 12 and verse 31. I've heard many people, they uh, just uh, want to know, what is this, this unpardonable sin? What is this unpardonable sin? Isn't there one sin that Christ didn't pay for? This unpardonable sin. It's known as blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Title of the message this morning is simply beware. Beware. So verse number 31, the Bible says this. Wherefore, based upon all these attacks, all the messages preached, the miracles seen, yet the response of the Pharisees, he says here, wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. 
neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. You can't have it two ways. Uh, they're, 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 they're saying of, of Christ that uh, he's saying some good things, but the tree's corrupt. And, and they're saying, he, he, he decide here, either make the tree good and his fruit good, or the tree corrupt and his tr- fruit uh, corrupt. It's a decision you have to make. God gave us a free will. Verse 34, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. You can kind of picture Jesus just turning and confronting the Pharisees and be careful. Beware. This isn't games. This isn't for play. This isn't for pretend. This is eternal. Uh, it's not for a time. It's not like you're going to mess up a couple of years of your life. It's, it's eternity at stake here. Uh, think about what you're doing. Think about what you're saying. Because there's eternal consequences. You ever want to say that to your kids? You know, kids think that until I'm 18, I can pretty much do whatever I want. And, you know, they, they expunge my record. Not all kids think that. Luke's looking at me like, I don't. I see that. Uh, but there are kids that live that way to say, hey, I'm a kid. Yeah, I mess up, but that's what childhood is for. Yeah, I can do all kinds of things to my body, and I can do all kinds of things to my life and, and whatever. And when I turn 18, then that's all going to be erased and, uh, that's not true. The court may seal your record if you got a record. But those are the forming years of who you're going to be rest your life. Uh, those are important years. And uh, he says, be careful here. Beware. Jesus coming, teaching the Pharisees. And again, we've mentioned, praise the Lord, many of the Pharisees ended up getting saved. You can read that in, in the book of Acts, but uh, but he's telling them, beware. Think about what you're saying. Think about what you're doing right now. This is serious. This is going to make an effect on your eternity. Every word spoken is going to be judged. Can you imagine standing before? Uh, I picture those who, uh, who not only have denied Christ, but have, uh, you know, have a, uh, have a, embarrassed and shamed and and even hurt christians and there's coming a day they're going to stand before an almighty god and and uh, try to justify why they're a good person uh that the 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 track that we have that's called this was your life i I don't know if it's going to be like that or not Bible says the books are going to be open uh, but it shows a movie screen uh, you know, and, and, and the man, you know, says, you know, Lord, I was a pretty good person in, 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 in earth. And all of a sudden he brings up this movie screen with the thought bubbles coming up. Even when the guy's sitting in church, he's thinking about ungodliness and and, you know, whatever. And and uh, to, to be able to see that, I, I'm glad that Jesus Christ's blood washed away my sins. And and I'm not going to have to see who I really am. I'd rather forget about who I really am. Uh, and uh, just praise the Lord for salvation. But. Uh, he's warning. He says they're coming a time. Every word's going to be judged. I mean, you're going to remember this for eternity. Consider that as you confront somebody who's lost and you try to share Jesus Christ with them and they either don't want to hear or uh, get upset with you for it or whatever. Uh, just to consider you need to pray for them because they will remember that for all eternity. That time that they had an opportunity and they threw it away. You ever had an opportunity you threw away? Uh, yeah, and uh, you, you can't ever get that back. I mean, you threw it away and you wish, oh, boy, I sure wasted. And, and it could be about physical things or, uh, you know, uh, but uh, but I I sure wasted that opportunity, didn't I? And uh, to consider that through all eternity as you're there in torment and hell forever and ever thinking about that opportunity or those opportunities that 
Uh, you had in America, there's going to be, uh, 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 most Americans are going to have many opportunities. They're going to be dwelling on rest of their life. The Bible says where the worm dieth not in hell. You know what that worm, I, I believe, in, and, and if you look at even in Shakespeare, uh, you know, and, and, and such, they used it in po uh, poetry. That worm was talking about the conscience. Uh, they call that, that uh, I'm not sure all of why, except for that worm just kind of eats at you. And they refer to it as the conscience. And, and the worm, died. people think it's going to be that the worms are going to be in the ground eating your body forever. I, you know, uh, but uh, the worm dieth not. I believe he's talking about your conscience. Uh, you know, that, uh, that uh, you're going to be conscious through it and you're going to be remembering uh, those uh, things. And, and so Jesus is warning them. He says, beware. Beware. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, just want to thank you for this morning. and Lord, I do thank you for uh, your love for us. And Lord, the time and the opportunities you give us in this life. Uh, Lord, all of us could sit before you today, and we know that there's been missed opportunities. Uh, Lord, there's uh, a lot of regrets, a lot of uh, opportunities we've not taken advantage and blessings you've tried to give us. And Things you've tried to do in our lives, and we we said no. And uh, Father, I uh, I just pray that as we uh, share the message this morning, Lord, we go out into that world every day as Christians, and we try to talk to people about you, and and uh, so so few it seems anymore want to listen. Uh, but I just pray that it would not discourage us from going, and that we'd remember the testimony of your son and how he continually was willing. He lived to go. Even today, ever liveth to make intercession uh, for us. I, I just pray, Lord, that you would, uh, would uh, bless the message this morning. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This uh, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, some, uh, some have said that uh, everybody gets one opportunity to hear the gospel, and if you reject it, you've blasphemed against the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, uh, if, if you look at it in the Old Testament, God the father was bearing witness of his son. He was given all the pictures through the sacrifices, through the temple. I mean, everything in the Old Testament, you can find so many illustrations of Jesus Christ. And, and, and then one day, John the Baptist, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And, and uh, no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Jesus Christ himself came into this world and bore witness of himself. And he, he went and, and uh, demonstrated and fulfilled the law and, and uh, taught uh, the disciples and, and uh, shared with people and showed the miracles and, and uh, to, uh, to uh, show that he is the Messiah, the Savior. And, and so he declared himself. And, and, and yet he left with the promise that the Holy Spirit's going to come. And the purpose of the Holy Spirit, he said, is to bear witness of me. And, and today it's the Holy Spirit of God who bears witness of Jesus Christ. Uh, those that hear the gospel and deny it, uh, they are denying the witness of the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, because the Holy Spirit, I, I believe every time the gospel is given, the Holy Spirit of God tries to convince men to be saved. The Holy Spirit of God is, is pulling at and working at and, uh, the, the man's hearts. And, and, uh, and so uh, some would say, well, you, everybody gets one opportunity. You refuse that one opportunity. You've blasphemed against the Holy Spirit. There's no more opportunity. It's too late. It's too bad. You missed that opportunity. Uh, I don't agree with that, but uh, that's, uh, you know, what some some teach. Uh, others, uh, you know, what teaches blessing the Holy Spirit that you come to the point where you reject Christ enough. That you're never going to get saved. Uh, no matter what takes place in life, what God would do or show you, you're never going to get saved. You reach that point. Nobody can say when that point is for some some people. It might have been the first time you hear the gospel. Some people, it might have been the fifth time. Uh, some people, it might have been the, the, the 30th time. There's people who literally have heard the gospel hundreds of times and said no every single time. And, and, uh, and so when uh, that final rejection of the Holy Spirit takes place, and of course, then there's others that say, well, you have until death. Uh, you have until death. And, and, and the Holy Spirit, the Bible says God's not willing that any perish. The Holy Spirit works upon the hearts of men and women until that last breath. Uh, and uh, there are people that on their deathbed, they finally trust Christ as their Savior. And, and, and you know, I don't know if they're uh, in, in a person's life. I don't know if there's that final time that God says one more time and this is it. You either accept me or not. And uh, their heart is hardened and it's sealed at that time. And they can live 20 more years 
uh, but they're completely set against the gospel and and they'll never nothing no matter what would happen they'd never get saved uh, i do find people that uh you know and and you say there's no atheists in foxholes i i found atheists in foxholes uh, and of course that statement when people get things get serious enough they'll call out to god uh, I, I found people that they, they go into eternity cursing God and, uh, you know, to uh, uh, it's kind of amazing curse the God that you don't believe in. But uh, but anyway, uh, you know, that's uh, that's, uh, you know, the, the case in, in, in some. But uh, to say, when is that blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? When is that uh, that uh, where you get to the point your heart gets so hard and so set that you are so set against the witness of the Holy Spirit that you never will uh, believe that you never will trust and uh, you know the bible says here that jesus is warning them that blasphemy of the holy spirit uh he's showing them the miracles uh he's he, he's preached the messages to them they've heard him but the intent of their heart is not to hear their intent of the heart is not to listen they don't want the truth they're not looking for the truth they're just looking how can we accuse him he's warning them that unpardonable sin, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Be careful here. You're on shaky ground. Let me read this verse of Scripture to you. 2 Timothy 2, 24 through 26 says this. It's uh, Paul telling Timothy, the preacher, who probably faced a lot of people that didn't want to hear the message, didn't want to listen to the truth. He says here, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men apt to teach patient in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves if god peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will there's a lot of people that just don't get it the first time there's a lot of people that have uh, you know, things in this life that have set them against the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, and uh, and so they, they, they their intent is not to hear the gospel. Their intent is not to listen to the truth of God's word in their heart. The Bible says just be patient. Keep preaching to them. Keep uh, praying for them. Keep talking to them about the Lord. And, and uh, what? Peradventure. Uh, those that oppose themselves. God would. Bring them to repentance that they'd recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. The Bible says that the God of this world blinded the mind of them who have not believed. Blinded the mind of them who have not believed. And uh, what? So they'll believe a lie. Uh, the devil's been very busy in America. Blind in the minds of people. All kinds of uh, excuses and things that uh, you know, people give and, and here beware of rejecting the, the witness of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Acts 8 talks about a man named Simon. He was a, a witch, uh, I guess, a male witch, a warlock, whatever. Uh, anyway, he did witchcraft. Uh, he was a magician. And, uh, you know, magicians put on a show. Uh, people, it's their livelihood. So they put on a show and people, uh, you know, are amazed by their uh, their tricks and their illusions and those things that they come to see and. And uh, Simon was one of those. And the people of his town, they uh, they thought a lot about him. But, uh, you know, one day Peter came preaching uh, the uh, the gospel and people started getting saved. And and uh, and then uh, or, uh, Peter Philip and then Peter came and, and laid hands upon them. The Holy Spirit came. Uh, you know, he got to start seeing miracles. And Simon, he's pretty interested in all this. And and in fact, he came to the apostles and he uh, he said, you know, here's some money. Can you show me how to do those tricks? Uh, you know, I want to be able to, to see how to do those. Why? That was his livelihood. Uh, there's people that Christianity is their livelihood. Uh, it's it's a job. It's a profession. Sometimes people get into it because they want to do good things. They're just kind hearted people. So they want to do good things. There's, uh, you know, all, all kinds of reasons. They say, well, there's no money in religion. Well, uh, tell tell the guys that, uh, you know, that uh, got their their mansions and their private jets and all that kind of stuff. There's no money in religion. There's money in religion. And uh, uh, to, uh, uh, you know, look at uh, the, the motive of what they got in, in into it for it. And Simon, he, he says, you know, I'd like to, uh, you know, I'd be able to purchase that. How much money can I give you to be able to do that? And, of course, the response was, uh, you know, uh, the, the response, something similar to he says, I, I perceive that you are in the gall of bitterness. Uh, and 
uh, there, uh, you know, uh, why? Because his heart was, it was all a show. There was no realization in his head that this is real. This is, this is true. It's something that, uh, you know, is, is life. There's a lot of people that go to church on Sundays. And you wonder, why don't they live, you know, the Christian life through the week? Because they just go to church on Sundays. That's Christianity. That's religion. Uh, what's religion? Well, you go to church on Sunday. Uh, you uh, uh, sing some songs that you don't know anything about. You, you, you just, uh, you know, uh, learn to, to sing. Maybe you like to sing. And so you, uh, you sing. Maybe you don't even sing. You just kind of listen to the singing and, and uh, the uh, uh, preaching or whatever. And then, uh, and then you go home and, and, and you're religious. Uh, maybe you go to one of those where you get to take the Lord's Supper every Sunday, and so you get a you know a wafer and a piece of uh, you know a wafer and a little drink of juice, and and uh, and so you feel good, spiritual, and and uh, you know you you were in church, uh, and uh, and uh, they they give some moral lessons, and moral lessons are good, and and uh, as you go, and uh, here here are the Pharisees, they they were very religious, very religious, and as they came, they they had no intent of listening or getting anything out of Christ's messages. Uh, they didn't want to change their life. They liked their life the way it was. They weren't coming to Christ to, uh, you know, uh, to uh, listen for, uh, you know, uh, any of those, those, uh, the right reasons. They, they were coming just, uh, you know, want to attack him. Why? Because we're losing followers. Uh, they're not following us anymore. We got to find something to attack this guy, bring him down so that they'll turn back and start following us again. And that was their intent, and so they never listened. They, they weren't seeking the truth, hearing. So he warns them. You know, there's going to come a day you're going to remember all these things you're saying. You're going to remember your actions and your thoughts and all those things, and, and uh, beware. You, you can say things against the Son of Man, and you can say things against the Father, but... Uh, you reject the Holy Spirit. Uh, you close off and seal the testimony of the Holy Spirit in, in your life, then uh, you're in trouble. Uh, you're in trouble because the Holy Spirit is the deity that is in this world that is convicting men of, of sin. Uh, he's in this world as one that is convicting men of, of judgment. Of condemnation, he's the one that is bringing testimony to Jesus Christ, and and so you uh, uh, you harden your heart to the conviction that is going on in your life right now that these things are true. Uh, you're you're in trouble, and uh, beware of the blast of the Holy Spirit. Notice verse thirty eight. This is their response to his warning. Uh, the response that they have to his his uh, warning here in verse uh, thirty eight says. Oops, I got 13 somehow. Chapter 12, verse 38 says, Then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. There shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Verse 41. The men of Nineveh. Remember Nineveh back in Jonah's day? Nineveh went and preached to ungodly people that God was ready to destroy them. Sent Nineveh. Nineveh said, I'm not going to go. I mean, Jonah said, I'm not going to go. He, uh, they, they were a, a horrible people to the Jewish people. Jonah didn't like them. He said, I'm not going to go preach to them. You're too merciful of a God. He went the other way. Well, God had a whale swallow him. Remember that? And, and of course, uh, threw him up on the beach, and he went, and, and he preached. It wasn't a very heartfelt message, though, was it? He didn't want him to repent. In fact, when they did, he got mad. But he went and preached, preached, and you can kind of picture Jonah hoping nobody will listen to him, but yet fulfilling, God told me i got to preach to him, so I better go preach to him. I can't handle another whale swallowing me, and and uh, so he, he goes and preaches to them. And then he goes up on a hill to watch and see what happens. Well, they repent. He gets mad at God because God saves them. And uh, notice here, verse 41, the men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation, shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. You can say, well, the pastor we had wasn't a very good preacher. Uh he really wasn't a good, you know, I really don't picture Jonas 
Jonah preached a really heartfelt message to you. He didn't want to be there in the first place. He probably didn't use a lot of illustration. He didn't tell a single joke. Uh, but he just went and delivered the message God had gave him. And, uh, and so he, he shared it with a few people and walked through the city and, you know, from one side to the other, and he preached it. And, and uh, uh, why do you say that? Because he got mad when they repented, so he really didn't want them to. Uh, it's kind of like one of those uh, things where they, uh, you know, they, they talk about back in the land grant days where uh, you, you had to give uh, notice to, to people that, uh, you know, that they could have this, this land or whatever the big landowners wanted it. So they'd go out and they'd nail a poster on a tree someplace on the back side of the tree so nobody would see it. And they'd, they'd uh, tell Washington, we fulfilled the requirements. We let the people know in the area that, uh, you know, they, uh, that they, uh, uh, that they uh, uh, had an opportunity to get this land. Nobody wanted it. Well, yeah, because you nailed the poster on the back side of the tree where nobody could see it and brush growing over it. And, and uh, uh, yeah, but we fulfilled our obligation. We let pe made it known. We let people know. And, and you know, it's kind of, you know, uh, maybe Jonah says he went. And uh, we could have all kinds of, you know, uh, excuses why we did not follow God, why we did not obey him or, uh, you know, with, uh, with people in America. Uh, Nobody ever told me. Uh, you mean all the billboards and flashing lights and and uh, you know all those uh, those those things? Nobody told you the uh, the Bibles. Uh, you know, in in, uh, in in and I found in many thrift stores you go in there and there's Bibles shelves of Bibles and you you say I'd like to buy a Bible and they say oh, I'll take it free. I mean I found you know that happened many times. Uh, and I mean uh, the the Word of God is is available and. And uh, you, you can't help but, you know, turn through the channels on the TV and hit something and and uh, not, uh, you know, uh, recommend it all that. But uh, the radio waves and, and you know, the, uh, the 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 preaching of the gospel and things. But, uh, you know, I just uh, nobody ever told me, never heard. And uh, here 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 he says, uh, you know, what are, what are you going to say to Nineveh in that day? Uh, they they didn't even have any Bible background. They weren't Jewish. Uh, they hadn't been taught the Old Testament. They had many gods. Uh, whatever the excuse, well, Lord, I just wasn't brought up in that religion or whatever. And, and still they heard the message, didn't they? It's amazing that Nineveh ever repented. Uh, but they did. Why? The Holy Spirit of God. Uh, the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, even though it wasn't much of a heartfelt me message, they still were made known, the message. The Holy Spirit of God made it known look here at verse 42 the queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of solomon behold a greater than solomon is here went and, and studied that out one time and to see how far she traveled uh, we're talking about months of traveling uh, now this is the queen she's leaving her throne uh, if you look at history, there was no king. So she, by being the queen, she was in charge of the country of Sheba. She leaves her throne for months. She leaves her country to travel and come to Solomon. And when he asked her why, she's curiosity. I'm just curious. Heard these reports that there's this really wise king that you got to go meet him. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, curiosity, curiosity kills the cat, right? Uh, she comes and she says the half was not told me. I didn't believe the report that was told me. And uh, uh, but but the half of it wasn't told me. Uh, she came and and, uh, you know, there there are those that, uh, you know, just uh, say, well, uh, you know, you didn't bring the message to me. There will probably be those that will say you didn't bring the message to me. I hope not in Coquille, though. Hope that we're able to cover every door in Coquille multiple times before. The Lord Jesus Christ comes. They ever say, nobody ever came to my door. Uh, no, but you did know that there was churches and you did know that the availability and you had Christians you worked with and and uh, there were opportunities. But here, uh, Queen of Sheba, she a great expense, a great effort. She goes and yet it was just curiosity. She wasn't even convinced it was true. She just wanted to go make sure, uh, make sure it wasn't true. She came and she found out that everything she had told and, and even more uh, was was true. Uh, 
Number one, beware of rejecting the witness of the Holy Spirit. But number two, beware of excuses. Beware of excuses. They come and they say, what sign are you going to show us? You know, you, you got to kind of laugh sometimes or at least smile inside. Uh, they've just rejected miracle after miracle after miracle Christ has done. They've watched him do the miracles. Uh, and uh, I mean, uh, if you read the passages that we've gone through and they've, they, they've, they've excused everyone, you know, the withered hand. Oh, you can't do that on the Sabbath. The Bible says he went out and he started healing everybody. Uh, there uh, you know on that day and and of course the blind man that he gave back the sight the lame man uh, he, you look at all the miracles previous the, uh, the, uh, the the deaf and dumb man that they healed and uh, uh, of course uh, they then come to Jesus and and uh, Jesus tells me says well if you just show us a sign <laughs> if you just show us a sign there's always an excuse uh, always an excuse of why we don't repent of our sins and turn to Christ uh, to trust him. They've heard all the messages. They've seen the miracles. And they come asking for a sign. And but the Bible says they wouldn't even believe if one came back from the dead. Uh, why? They're just looking for excuses. They really don't want to believe what is true. Those today would say seeing is believing. If. If I saw the Lord, I remember Ty Thomas, he said, if I see the holes in his hands, uh, you know, and, and of course, the Lord said, Ble you, you believe because you've seen. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. There in the end of the book of the Gospel of John. Excuses. Christians, uh, I knew this Christian and he had such a bad testimony. Went to church on Sunday and he lived for the devil all week. And so there's nothing to that Christianity. Uh, excuses. Is that really going to go when you're standing for the almighty God in heaven? Uh, the temp told it many times, but the pig farmer that has the guy come out to his pigs and. And, uh, you know, the, the preacher, he comes out and I want to buy a pig and and. Uh, by the way, I haven't seen you in church. Well, I don't go to church because all the hypocrites there. You know which one I've told it. I don't know how many times. You get very tired of hearing my illustrations. But anyway, uh, and uh, they sound good to me. So, uh, And he says, because all the hypocrites there. And the preacher says, well, tell you what, I want to buy a pig. And, and I want that one right over there. And he says, oh, you don't want that one. That's the runt. It's going to die. And uh, he says, no, I'm going to buy that one. And I'm going to take it to town. And I'm going to parade it around. I'm going to tell everybody in town that this is the kind of pig you raise. And uh, the farmer, <laughs> you can't do that. Uh, there are some poor Christians out there, aren't there? But there's also a lot of Christians that are sincerely trying to grow and serve the Lord. And they mess up sometimes. Because uh, they're people like us. Uh, but you can find some some religious people that name the name of Christ, that stab people in the back, that do all kinds of uncalled for things. You can also find Christians trying to live for the Lord that have a bad day. Uh, you want an excuse, you can find an excuse. You can probably follow me around all day and find an excuse somewhere. Uh, something I say or something I do or don't say or don't do or uh, whatever. Uh, if you want an excuse, there's an excuse. My parents made me go to church. That's the worst excuse there is. Uh, well, they made you wear a coat, too, didn't they? When it's cold out, so you wouldn't get sick. My parents made me go to church. And we sit, we live in such a rebellious society. Kids be saying, I, I, I have to thank the Lord my kids took me to church. I mean, my parents took me to church. But uh, my, my parents made me go to church, so I, I'm, I'm not going to. Listen, I'm not religious. A lot of people say that. And uh, I'm not religious. Uh, I'm better than most Christians I know. I'm better than most Christians I know. Boy, are the excuses. Look at Proverbs 19. I was reading this in my devotion time this morning. Uh, Proverbs 19. It is good to take months and read a proverb a month, I mean a day, and you get through the book of Proverbs.
Proverbs 19 is the the uh, chapter of Proverbs for today. But look at verse 21. The Bible says here there are many devices in a man's heart. It's amazing the things we can come up with, isn't it? The justifications, excuses. It says, a ma- uh, uh, again here it says, there are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. It uh, doesn't matter what you come up with. God's counsel is going to stand. You're not going to change uh, God's word. And uh, no matter how many excuses that we might come up with, but they sow us another sign. Of course, he kind of puts them in their place. Verse 39, but he answered and said to them, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. There shall no sign be given it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And so if you're looking for a sign, uh, Gideon, and his sign. A lot of people say, I just want to put out my fleece. Uh, you know, Gideon still did that with fear and trembling, didn't he? Because he knew he was tempting God there when he did it. God told him, this is what I want you to do. And uh, uh, he says, well, I'm not sure it's you telling me. And so, uh, you know, let me put a fleece out. And I get the order backwards. But, uh, you know, uh, 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 make the, the ground all wet and the fleece dry. I'll believe you. And so God does. Uh, you know, we serve a merciful God, don't we? And uh, so Gideon gets up the next day. Well, I really want to make sure it's you, God. And so uh, could you go ahead and, and, and tonight just make the, the ground dry and the fleece wet? So he gets up the next morning, he wrings the fleece out and says, I don't know, a bowl of water or something he got out of that. But uh, he says, okay, God, I'll follow you. Praise the Lord. Who knows what would have done if he asked for a third sign? Uh, you know, God would have said, zip, somebody else. Next, uh, I really don't know. We're on shaky ground anytime we ask God to prove his word. God, can you really prove that that's what you want me to do? What, you mean before, besides preserving my word so that you have it in print? Yes. Uh, could you, could you, uh, you know, uh, give me a little bit more evidence. Uh, here, he just says uh, uh, there's no sign going to be given then. Beware of excuses, and then thirdly, beware of the latter end of your course. Beware of the latter end of your course. Whether it be a lost person who rejects the gospel of Jesus Christ or be a Christian who rejects obeying Christ, uh, we can harden our hearts to the Lord too, can't we? We can't just apply this to lost people, but we can harden our hearts to the Lord, and it's not that you'd commit the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit that's a rejection of Christ and and his witness of him but uh, but uh, we we can reject truths that God gives us and and those consequences of it uh, here in, in as we finish up verse 43 through 45 says when the unclean spirit has gone out of a, uh, says when it, when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he findeth it empty and swept and garnished. I do believe this world was a better place because Christ was in it. And uh, boy, the devil didn't get very far when Christ was here, did he? It says in verse 45, then goeth he and taketh uh, to himself seven other spirits. And then he comes back and finds out that uh, swept and garnished uh, more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. The last state of that man, all of a sudden it's, oh, he's not talking about a house, is he? The last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. That's what religion will do for you. It may clean you up and make you look nice, but the latter end is worse than the first. America is in a dangerous place rejecting Christ, trying to take Christ out of America. The latter end of America is going to be worse than the first. We should learn from Israel. Uh, Israel had the commands of God. Israel had God working uh, in the midst of the nation. But, you know, it came to the time they put God on the outside of the nation. And we see that uh, testimony in Ezekiel's day when the Spirit of God uh, sits upon the temple and then outside the temple and then on the walls of the gate and then up on the hill. God promises it's coming a day that it's going to come back into Israel. But, uh, you know, we know the, the valley of dry bones and the, 
uh, the coming together and then the, the breathing the spirit. And the spirit hasn't been breathed back into Israel yet. Israel as a nation has gone through miserable, horrible things. Uh, the Holocaust is just one of them. That's the one we're most more familiar with. But uh, even today, they live their lives in fear. And, uh, you know, the, the, the latter end be worse than the first. America has enjoyed the blessings of God. But we're in trouble. Uh, things are not getting better. They're starting to fall apart. Uh, the more we try to take God out of things and the, the fewer Christians and the, uh, the more uh, Muslims and atheists and others, uh, we're seeing a change in America. Beware the latter end of your course. You know, in your youth, you think, oh, I can make all the mistakes that I want to make, and it'll be okay. When I get older, I'll just start doing right. Uh, the problem is, is, is you're molding. That's who you become. Uh, and yet we think, oh, I can, you know, make all these mistakes. It's all fun and games and just messing around, and, and uh, beware. It's the same as young Christians, baby Christians, we... Uh, grow up and we don't take that responsibility and and uh, beware the latter end. Consider. We told the Pharisees here. You should be more concerned about eternity uh, than you are about having a bunch of people follow you here on this earth. Uh, beware the latter end. Beware. Beware. You know, we live in a world that's no longer friendly towards Christian. Uh, we in America have been used to a country that's friendly towards Christianity. Uh, but somewhere along the line, come to the point that if you're going to read, if you're going to live your life by the word of God, you're going to suffer persecution uh, for practicing and teaching what the Bible teaches. And we, we have to get prepared for that uh, and understand. But uh, don't lose sight. We're here to lead souls to Christ. We're here to be a light to the uttermost parts of the world. Uh, mercy, not sacrifice. A bruised reed shall he not break. Don't forget who the enemy is. Uh, don't forget who the enemy is. Still love them. Doesn't mean you go out and treat them like enemy. Uh, they're not your enemy. You're, th I mean, yeah, they're not your enemy. You're their enemy. Uh, you're here for their good. And then lastly, beware. Uh, beware. We need to have a heart that stays tender to the Holy Spirit of God. A life that is still moldable. No matter how old we get, uh, just because we get old doesn't mean we have to dry out, right? Uh, or harden up or whatever it is. Uh, we can still uh, be little children to the Lord and still be moldable to Him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank You for this morning. Thank You, Lord, for the message today. I, I, I just pray for America. I pray, Father, for uh, those around us, those that we witness to, those that, uh, Lord, I, I, it would be a blessing to see everyone in Coke Hill come to church. and uh, Lord, to see everyone in, in Coke Hill saved and knowing you and, and uh, desiring to follow you. Uh, Lord, if, if only the churches in America uh, would uh, be serious about your word and, and have a zeal uh, for being uh, a Christian. And uh, Lord, I, uh, I just pray that you would uh, bring revival to America. Uh, but Lord, first, you need to bring revival to us. Uh, Lord, we'd be as children as we come before you that, uh, Lord, again, we would uh, respond to the simple truths of your word and, and uh, Father, desire to follow you on a daily basis uh, and be a light to this community. Uh, Father, I just again thank you for the message this morning because I need it. And I just ask you, bless this invitation time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.